we just released an update for the Iris VR mobile viewer. And um, V-Ray has also released a public beta for their Revit support. So I want to show the entire workflow from Revit into V-Ray and then into the Iris mobile viewer. Um, this is a 3D camera that's been set up in the Revit scene. Um, it's in the center of a hallway, which is important. You don't want it too close to an interior wall. Um, and then also the height is pretty close to head height. You'll see it's a little tall, um, but you want the camera to actually be within the right sort of height that your eyes would normally be at. With that set up, we can go into the V-Ray tab and um, they've added two very important buttons here, the enable stereoscopic and the enable box. Um, both these need to be checked for you to get the proper distortion. And then equally as important is the resolution. You need to set it to 1536 by 1536. It's a square and that will actually render at the proper resolution when you finally click render. I've set up some other settings as well. I've set the quality to high. That's obviously up to you what you want to choose there. Um, make sure you have the proper camera selected from your 3D views. And then um, I also have the V-Ray sun enabled. So when that's all set up, you can click render with V-Ray and you'll see that it renders a 12 by one image. And this is very important for our mobile app. I'll fast, I'll fast forward ahead here because this does take quite a long time to render. Um, it's an 18K image. And when it's complete, you can see that in the upper corner there, you can select to save to disk. So I've chosen to save this image to the desktop. And um, once I click OK, it'll send this image out as a PNG. Right now, the Iris mobile app only supports JPEGs. So I'm going to do this intermediary step where I save this exported image actually as um, a JPEG instead of a PNG. Um, so I'll navigate to the desktop, find that PNG. And when it's up in Photoshop, the simplest thing to do that we've found is to um, go up to file and then export and choose export as. And from here, you can uh, wait for the image to load, but you can export a JPEG. Um, and in our experience, at least with web work and um, with the cardboard, it's fine to set the quality to 60%. Uh, the, the, the difference is not that noticeable and it will save you a lot of space um, in terms of file size. So we'll save this out as a JPEG again onto our desktop. And now we can upload this to the Iris uh, cloud. So go to app.irisvr.com, um, put in your credentials and log in then go to the mobile viewer and from here uh, you can upload that image so select upload a pano choose that file and it will bring that file actually into your local pano uh, library and sync it up with the cloud so it'll add that image um, right down there and at this point you can uh, close out of your computer go into your phone and open up the desktop app um, and it'll be available to access. So we can put the phone into a cardboard and you'll be ready to go. So this is an actual screen grab of the app functioning um, in stereo. Here you can log in using your pin from app.irisvr.com and um, it'll download your images. This only needs to happen once. You'll notice that uh, after it downloads once, it will still request your login, but it won't need to download your images again. All the images are stored locally on your phone. So once the download's complete, you can use the arrow buttons on the left and right to navigate to the panorama you just uploaded, and you're in. So that is the full workflow from Revit, um, rendered in V-Ray, and then finally output into a VR file that can be viewed in cardboard.